So here is a cool fact. Rope manufacturers claim that no matter what fall you will take on a dynamic climbing rope, the impact is unlikely to injure you. That was sick! So how does it feel this impact on a huge outside whipper? Or this is even better. How does it feel to fall while trying to clip a second quick draw and get a really hard catch? So can this impact injure you? Does it hurt? Or even better, how does it feel when I'm trying to explain all of this and almost kill myself? So yeah, that happened and it all started with my wish to measure the forces of really, really hard climbing falls. And knowing these forces allow me and probably others to answer a lot of important questions for us climbers, like can you break a dynamic climbing rope, which is really, really worn out on realistic climbing falls. Some people would say that it is impossible to break this rope, while others would freak out seeing this, because it doesn't look that great, to be honest. So stick with me, the answer to this is coming, and it actually surprised me a lot. But now, back to hard falls. Oh, so, in previous episode, we went to a small climbing gym in Germany and we tried to create the hardest climbing fall by creating a ton of drag and belaying in some crazy, crazy ways. And then I had a quiz for you. Which fall do you think was harder for the climber? This crazy slam or this big outdoors whipper? So, if you think that the big fall looks softer, good, because I thought exactly the same thing and pretty much any person to whom I showed these two clips. I'm gonna show you two falls and you can try to guess which one was harder to the climber. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I can already tell you. <laughs> you think so? Well, theoretically, I would say that the second one in the gym is the harder fall because it's a shorter rope that can absorb, or a shorter portion of the rope will absorb the energy since there's so much zigzag happening in the rope line and therefore, yeah, not the entire rope that is actually used. So let's see if that's actually true. That was sick. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. It was funny. That was like a massive fall. It was. Falling was nice. <laughs> How big you think the fall was? How oh, hard to say. I will say like 8 meters maybe. It looked massive from the side. It looked massive. <laughs> maybe 10. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, do you, think? you think it's more than 10? Yeah, from the side it looks massive. I think more. It was more to 15, I would say. You no? Really? You don't think so? 15, one, two. No, no, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, judging the distance of the fall is always tricky, but by my best estimation, before the fall he was around two and a half meters above the ball, and after the fall he was about eight meters below the ball. So let's say 10 meters. And this 10 meters fall resulted into. 3.4 kilonewtons of force. And if we compare that to the gym slam, that slam was only 2.6 kilonewtons. And the hardest fall in the gym that day we got was 2.9 kilonewtons, this one. So it doesn't mean that this huge whipper was harder than the slam. It doesn't look like that, right? And to make sense out of all of this, we need to define what does it mean harder. 
What we measured is the peak force to the climber's harness. And this peak force happens around this moment. And if you look closely, this doesn't look that bad. And what gets our attention is actually the contact to the wall. Imagine if this wall would have been not overhanging. Ah! Then the peak force on the dynamometer to the climber's harness would read exactly the same, but the slam to the wall would be much worse. And that's by the way how most of the people sprain their ankles. Short fall, hard catch, super quick slam into the wall. So how hard the fall for the climber is will depend on two things. First is the initial impact to the harness, this that we measure to be around three to three and a half kilonewtons on hard falls. Let's test how three kilonewtons feels on the harness. Don't do this at home. Ouch! Told you not to do this at home. Lesson learned. Falling on a single bolt on 3 kN of force can make entire bolt come out of 18 mm of shitty Spanish plywood. So, <laughs> The impact was okay, but the landing on the ass was not so okay. All right, don't do this at home number two. Since I really want to experience three or three and a half kilonewtons of force to my harness, so I can tell you how that feels, I rigged another system, which is hopefully not gonna end up like the first one. This time it's very static, but it doesn't matter. I just want to feel it. Wow, that was 3.8 kilonewtons. And actually that felt quite okay. 3.1 kilonewtons and I barely feel anything. Three and a half. Ooh. Okay, this was almost four kilonewtons. So under three kilonewtons, I don't feel anything. Between three and four, I get a little mm, but that's far from injuring me. And my homemade climbing wall breaks at 3.8 kilonewtons to the bolt, which would be around two kilonewtons to the climber. So, my homemade climbing wall is not for falling. And the second thing that the climber will experience is of course the impact to the wall, which as we saw might be problematic. In fact, let's zoom in on the big fall and watch it a couple of times. Ah. And now let's compare it to the gym fall. So, as you can see, it's not that easy to tell which one was actually harder. And it also depends a lot on climber's skills to absorb the impact with his legs. As a climber, you basically need to be like a cat when you hit the wall. Super soft. And people who do a lot of bouldering, they tend to be much better because they fall on the crash pads a lot. And falling on a crash pad with stiff legs would probably kill you. So the same applies to falling on ropes. You want to absorb the impact as soft as possible. And of course, there are other factors that contribute to how hard you will slam to the wall. For example, jumping away or pushing yourself away from the wall, as I talked in the previous episode, or belaying in really hard ways. In gym case, we created a hard catch on purpose. However, on outdoors whipper, the belayer was standing and doing nothing. Handbag. And I have a separate video coming where I will show that standing and doing nothing creates much harder catch 
than pretty much any soft belaying method you can try. So although this belay didn't look hard, it was definitely possible to make it much softer. But this was actually perfect because I got the force to the climber on big whipper on hard dish catch. Totally realistic scenario. And that's actually not all. In the following months I was going around and making a ton of experiments <laughs> during which I recorded the forces to the climber on over hundreds of falls. And even Ryan sent me some clips of his to compare the data. Oh, oh that was better than Wheaties in the morning. <laughs> I hit 1.14. I got 2.64. And the hardest fall I recorded was this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you saved me. I know, you I know saved me. This is the hardest recording you've got. 3.60. So in this case, we were filming an episode of how to belay sketchy, close to the ground falls. The climber was clipping the second quick draw above his head and takes a fall. So that's another sneak peek into the future what's coming on my channel. And if you don't want to miss that, I hope that you do YouTube things and subscribe and click all of these bells and stuff. But for now, I can say that unless the climber is really, really heavy or we are in some unlucky multi-pitch scenario, which I haven't had time yet to experiment with, creating a fall which would be harder than four kilonewtons to the climber is really, really unlikely. And that's really good to know because it just shows how great the climbing ropes are at keeping us safe. As I've just demonstrated here, four kilonewtons to climber's harness is not really something we should worry about. Unless, of course, it's accompanied by a slam to the wall. And that brings me to the original question. Can I snap this very worn out rope on a realistic climbing fall? Or now I can rephrase the question. Can I snap this rope on forces below 4 kN to the rope? And the answer to this surprised me a lot. I had a chance to hang out with Mammoth engineers and test this. And also ask pretty much any question I wanted. And man, that was super interesting. So I recommend to not miss the next episode. And until then, I'm gonna leave you with somebody who really likes challenges. Okay. <laughs> Le left hand is 29. No, I think sitting is better. It's all about technique. <laughs> <laughs> it's better. It's 8.68 now. Nice. <laughs> okay. okay, pressing as hard as you can with one hand. Okay. He's going slow mode. He's, he's, he's weaker than I! <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. He's weaker than me! What? How, how much did you do? I don't say it. Ah, and to make this competition a little bit more fair, I decided to split it into 1000 for guys and 1000 for girls. And to make it even more interesting, girls can win both categories. Of course, if there is a girl who is stronger than the guys. <laughs> Not better. Yeah, you can grab in any way you like. Just any recommendation? Um, no, it's a, it's a competition. I don't give any hints. <laughs> Everybody tries to go slow first with this. I am I am so much better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the hit technique was funny. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's going to be worse. <laughs> yeah! 50! I'm the star. <laughs> Where is the power 
ice cream. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you have, oh you have 70. <laughs> you have 70. Even the dog congratulates you. I don't know, boxing technique, right? <clears throat> oh, what's up, my, my, my. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, boxing technique. <laughs> oh, it works. The boxing technique works. <laughs> it's all about technique. <laughs> you, you like the boxing technique? Somehow. <laughs> you want to try boxing technique? <laughs> it's my best. <laughs> By the way, did you notice that this episode had no annoying ads? This is thanks to people like this guy. <laughs>